I made the whole world coal. After seeing how much you guys loved the whole world being gold and reading your comments asking for this one, you know that I have to give you guys what you want. Coal is the most valuable trade good in the world, and the furnace building associated with it gives some super strong scaling buffs to your economy, so this one might get a little bit out of hand. If you do enjoy the video, please don't forget to like it and share it with a friend who you think might enjoy it as well. Not only is the whole world coal, but I also unlocked the furnace building. Everybody in the world has technology available to build furnaces, which if you don't know, is the manufactory associated with coal. Now it's a special manufactory that gives a global modifier of 5% goods produced. So building five of these things gives you 25% national goods produced. So a big nation like England can build 20 or 30 of these or even more as they get bigger and uh, the goods produced bonuses are going to be pretty massive. Now the trade nodes are gonna need to update because clearly coal is worth quite a bit more than like fish. So obviously the nations like that are in the channel, Sevilla, Genoa, they are going to have an edge, but that doesn't mean this won't be interesting. Also, we're playing on the new patch 1.34 and apparently they fixed the native. So we're going to keep them this time around, see how they go. This is their one chance. And if they are annoying, I'm going to continue to delete them for future videos. Either way, you guys know the drill. We're going to speed five. We're going to unpause. Oh yeah. 61 ducats in the English channel. 49 ducats in Genoa. Just so you know, these are numbers that you'll see like when global trade spawns. So everybody is going to be very rich. Even if they have like one province in the node, they will be collecting quite a bit more money because there's going to be so much more in the node, of course. You can see here that based on their trade efficiency, they are collecting 34 ducats per month down here in the node. That might make them hit a little bit harder against the French, but I am very curious to see who is going to be the first ones to build up a bunch of furnaces and start snowballing. If you take a look over here in Calais, you can see that there is a furnace here. So that means they now have 5% goods produced globally, at least as long as they hold on to Calais. They're also in the process of building two more down here in Laborde and Bordeaux. So you're going to see some more money for the English. You can see that Austria has built one and they did get the PU with Hungary. So uh, they're going to be building some in their subjects lands as well. Ottomans have built two and it uh, looks like they are going to continue to snowball also as have the Mamluks built one. Oh my gosh, Ming is building a ton of them. That can mean one of two things. They are either going to be really strong, but uh, we already know that the Ming will blow up and now all of their little breakaway states are also going to be equally stronger now. Oh, oh my gosh. Ming is collecting 104 ducats per month from trade. England is over here still only at about 30. Down in Genoa, Genoa is rocking at 20. So uh, yeah, Ming clearly has the edge now. Oh, this is it right here. So taking a look at the goods produced modifier, Ming rocking a plus 95% goods produced, which means there's 95% more goods produced in every single province that they own. So you can see here that this province here is only producing 0.2, but it's actually producing 0.36 because of the global goods produced. A little under 50 years in, and it looks like Austria is having a very solid game. They are currently beating the tar out of Bohemia and Poland-Lithuania. Not to mention they got the Burgundian inheritance. So uh, yeah, quite a big power base for them. As a matter of fact, Austria is the number three great power behind the Ottomans and the Ming. The Ming who, by the way, have a fully stacked economic hegemon. So safe to say their economy is a churning. After them, though, we're looking at Castile, France, Muscovy, the Mamluks, and then Poland. Poland got the personal union, and Castile has the personal union of Aragon, Navarra, and Naples. So they're having a good game as well. The colonial game has started, of course. We have Castilian Brazil. They're also down here in Rio de Janeiro. The English are here in the Orinoco Delta, and the Portuguese are power colonizing the Caribbean. England is also here a few random points on the East Coast, so no doubt they are going to be getting started here. But you can't overlook it. We do indeed have a Norway. But yeah, look at Ming and Korea just absolutely just filling up every single province with a furnace. Uh, yeah, Ming sitting on a very cool 510% goods produced. So they are making the most of the coal that they have available to them. Look at that. 418 ducats from trade. My goodness, Ming. That is kind of nuts considering it's only 1,500. Yeah, over here, England is only collecting 142 only. Renaissance is basically everywhere over here in Europe as well as Northern Africa. And colonialism spawned here in England and it is making its way around the Mediterranean sooner rather than later. 
But yeah, the income comparison here is going to be interesting. We're going to keep checking this throughout the video. Ming at 411. Number two is the Ottomans with like one third of that almost at 150. Then England, Timmy, Castile, France, Venice, Mamluks, and then Portugal. And then after that, it's Malacca with under 75. Well, we knew this was going to happen. It looks like China is starting to fall apart here. You can see Ming has already lost Yu and Wu, despite being quite strong and extremely rich. Turns out money can't solve all of your problems. Otherwise, India is still kind of the usual four or five different blobs. We'll see who comes out on top over there. Timurids actually having a pretty solid game, integrating all of their subjects and pushing down into India. So we might see a Mughals this time around. Russia has formed and Russia is looking pretty good. Great Britain has also formed and is continuing to colonize the east coast of America. Spain has formed and it looks like they are also getting quite a bit of colonial stuff over here. They're all the way into Peru at the moment. Lots of Brazil and lots of La Plata. Portugal on top of the Caribbean is in the Cape of Good Hope. So it looks like they're heading over to the Spice Islands. Congo has consolidated Central Africa. And West Africa is still kind of a mixed bag. Songhai is looking pretty good, but so is Jolof for now. Spain and the Timurids both with over 500 ducats per month of trade income, followed by QQ at 470. So Persia, you can't count out Persia. And then there's Russia, Portugal, the Mamluks, Venice, Malacca still all the way over there on the other side of the world, France, Pope Man, and then Kilwa. Now, if this isn't a comeback, I really don't know what is. A fully stacked out, fully reformed Empire of China, Ming, looking very strong, almost integrated the entirety of their subjects and rocking 900 ducats per month in trade. Now, when I think about the Industrial Revolution, I think about England, you know, America, of course, had its own like later on Industrial Revolution. I didn't really think about the Ming, right? Because I guess you can consider this sort of an Industrial Revolution, right? They, they brought all that coal out. Now they don't have anything to eat. They have no food, no grain, no, no fish, nothing like that. They just have coal, but boy, is coal good for business? Timmy's still going quite strong. India definitely seems to be struggling to kind of consolidate its power, but Ayutthaya over here pushing into Burma all the way up bordering Bengal. Otto and the Memelux are going back and forth. Doesn't look like there is a decided winner just yet. And Russia is doing quite good. HRE is basically tapping out. No more imperial authority coming in. And that's because the Reformation is here, of course. Reform and Protestant kind of 50-50. And again, it looks like England went Protestant and then formed Anglican. So they get to convert twice, apparently. I don't know. Britain is also down here into the Congo, colonizing a bit of the land over here. And you guys got to remember, the trade from Africa could be massive with all the coal. As far as the colonial game goes, it's mostly Spain in the southern parts of South America, with France and Britain in the northern parts of South America. Central America is mostly Portugal, as well as the Caribbean. And the 13 colonies looking extremely clean, with Newfoundland over here. Everybody's trying to get in a bit of the west coast over here. You got Pacifico Norte, you got the British Cascadia, and it looks like Portugal is trying to get some colonial nations set up over here. They do have a California. Also, Australia is mostly finished, and it is Spanish. We are up to 1,700 ducats per month from trade alone for Great Britain. Over 1,000 for QQ. Kilwa, almost 900. And the Ottomans still rocking a clean 800 almost. The borders in Europe have been pretty stable for like the last 100 years or so. Timmy is one province away from forming the Mughals. <laughs> oh, man. Their borders haven't changed hardly at all in like, yeah, 150 years. Ming is just absolutely rock solid, just, just sitting there, Celestial Empire style. And I wanted to take a look at this. Look at this monument over here in Dalaskigan. Plus nine goods produced, right? And then that's further multiplied by the furnace modifier, which is, uh, yeah, it's quite a bit. Almost 50 goods produced in this one province. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you come down here, you can see there's like two goods produced, two goods produced, two goods produced. So each of these provinces is also getting quite a few bonuses. Look at that, 18. So it makes a little bit more sense why the Mamluks would be collecting so much money. And it looks like the New World is mostly filled in. Portugal over here with Britain over here, though I can't forget Nova Scotia. We can't forget about Scottish Louisiana up here in Michigan. Apparently the British decided they wanted Manchuria as well. And Korea decided that they wanted Japan. The Spanish Malacca's over here, Los Filipinos, completely colonized by the Spanish. And it looks like Bamanis is slowly starting to pull through over here as the uh, preeminent power in India. We all know about the American state of Illinois, basically like half of the Louisiana Purchase. 
right next to Mexico that goes all the way up into like Colorado and Nebraska. Aside from that, the Colonial game looks pretty similar to what it did last time we looked. But we've got a rare tag alert. Malaya over here has been formed by a nation called like Cerebon or something like that. Never heard of them, really. I've seen them in a couple of my videos. I don't know where they come from. But yeah, they ended up forming Malaya. Somehow Austrian Baltic is a thing along either side of a big strong Brandenburg, Poland, Lithuania. I don't know why they haven't clicked a button to form the Commonwealth, but they haven't. Ah, right. They need Danzig and Marienburg. Feels bad, man. The Mughals finally got around to forming. They decided, you know what? Maybe we've got all this money. And after like 100 years of sitting with their treasury maxed out and a golden era, they decided to form the Mughals. So good on you guys. They just needed a little bit of encouragement. Kilwa over here taking advantage of the Zanzibar trade, absolutely dominating Eastern Africa. This might be my favorite thing I've seen so far. Uh, the Netherlands is like a two province minor, three provinces if you count this one in South Africa. Their capital used to be over here, but now they've lost land to Portugal. So now they're even more restricted over here. The Boer Wars against the Portuguese this time around though. British Congo is indeed a thing. And Spanish Guinea spanning all the way, basically the entirety of West Africa. With about a hundred years left, Spain is way out in front, about a thousand development ahead of Ming, who's basically tied with Great Britain, Austria having an incredible game, and France up there as well. And then there's a bit of a drop off until you get to the Ottomans, Poland, and the Mughals. I am disappointed. Spain was naval hegemon, so they apparently lost the war somewhere along the line. But uh, yeah, economic hegemon is still the Ming. So at a quick glance, there's definitely quite a few interesting map modes we're going to be taking a look at today. The dynastic map mode here is a pretty good one. You can see we've got uh, this Lobanov Rotovsky in Great Britain, as well as over here under their personal union of Russia, who, by the way, follow the Anglican faith. We've got the von Habsburgs over here in Austria, as well as their personal union of Catholic Spain. I don't exactly know how this worked, but the Ottomans are also in charge of the Mughals. <laughs> so there's that. This one over here is it for Illinois as well as Mexico. They share a royal dynasty, apparently. And then we have the development map mode, which I think is a really, really good one. Take a look at Vienna. 80 dev, 80. Look at Northern Italy, dude. 58, 66, 61, 56. They just have so much production dev and every single province has a furnace. Even over in the New World, we've got provinces like this one here, 36, 43 in this Mexican province. Look at all this development over here, 38, 37. This is in the mountains. This is in the middle of nowhere. 43 over here in Pictuck. The religious map mode is mostly Catholic over here. Despite being Anglican, it looks like Britain didn't really convert a whole lot of their provinces. And it appears that Russia is Anglican in name only. I don't see a single province over here that has been converted to Anglican. But it seems like Ayutthaya over here converted quite a bit of Southeast Asia as well as Central China, Tibet, that area. India never quite figured it out, but it looks like Bamanis or the Mughals are kind of the power in India. The Ottomans ended up crumbling a bit and the Austrians ended up taking Constantinople in the end, 56 development. And they're actually in the process of upgrading the Hagia Sophia. The great powers of the world is Austria by a long shot with Great Britain as a second place. And then way down at 4,500 development is Ming. And then way below them is Ayutthaya, the Meme Lux, Brandenburg rounding out the top six, then France, then Bamanis. It seems that Ming must have lost the war because they are no longer the economic hegemon. That is indeed Austria and a fully stacked naval hegemon for Great Britain. New World is a mixture of animist and Catholic, though there is some Anglican down here in uh, British Columbia, not that British Columbia. Mexico is Catholic, no surprise there. And we got Anglican over here in the 13 colonies mixed with some totemist. <laughs> cultures are an absolute mess, mostly Portuguese and American up here, a ton of different native cultures over here. There's a bit of Danish up in Canada. South America is mostly this Castilian and this uh, Platinian with some French up here and some English over here as well. Africa was heavily colonized, but not much more than what it was last time we saw. You can see Kilwa over here absolutely had a good game. And aside from some of the cultures down here in the south, it seems that they are mostly the same, but it does appear that the Castilians specifically wanted this area to follow their culture. Europe looks pretty normal from what I can tell. A couple of Austrian provinces converted over here, but that's about it. Looks like Riga took their culture and spread it a bit over to a couple of these provinces. So that's pretty interesting. Looks like the Jerkins actually converted a couple Korean provinces. So that did happen. 
And look at that. Sulu ended up taking over the entirety of uh, the Philippines. They are a, they're like a native island people. So good on them. I don't know how they managed to snag that from Spain, but they did. And the numbers that we've all been waiting for here, the trade income at the end of the game, Great Britain with 3,000 income per month from trade. The Mamluks with almost 900 below them. And then another 600 down is the Ming. Pretty crazy numbers. Ottomans even with over 1,000. I did forget that we have an independent Cuba over here. So yeah, can't forget them. Take a look at that. 2,387 ducats in the English channel and Alexandria with 1,400. Malacca is the third most valuable trade node in the world with over 1,000. Safe to say that coal made a difference. And by the way, I'd had some comments about this in the gold episode. So yes, a couple of these provinces, especially in the new world, get converted to various different trade goods. You can see we've got some cocoa here, tropical wood, copper, sugar, gems, We've got some coffee up here in the north, and those are just events that happen when the colonies are forming. Those are vanilla events. But for the most part, everything is still coal, and that's exactly the way that we like it here. Isn't that right, boys? If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on it and leave a comment down below if you've got some ideas of fun stuff that you'd like to see next. If you haven't already, you should definitely subscribe. And if you have some friends that you think would like this video, go ahead and share the link with them. If you want early access to these videos, my patrons get early access because I could not do this without them. As little as $5 a month will get you that. And if you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter, those things are all linked in the description below the video. I'm most active in my Discord and on my Twitter, so feel free to check those out. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for you for today. Until next time, stay chill.